world before the digital age, uh, you and I could transact directly with one another, and you knew that whatever I was giving you in return for whatever you were giving me was real, that I actually owned that asset. With the digitization of that and us transacting over the internet, you actually needed a third party to validate both am I who I really say I am, do I actually own that asset, and do you really have the value to, uh, to provide me in return for that asset, right? So that intermediary uh, was the one creating the trust because both parties trusted that same person. Now the blockchain takes what the internet can do, which is distribute uh, data assets, and it creates ownership of that data asset, right? It also allows us the ability to track the transfer of this ownership of that digital asset and allows for that peer-to-peer -peer interaction. So now without having to trust that intermediary, I can actually trust you because I trust the system and trust what the system can do, which is validate the authenticity of the human, validate the realness of that currency or that value that is being exchanged for that. And on top of that, it also uh, prevents what we call the double spend problem. So uh, you can't pay me and you can't pay someone else with that same currency and I can't give you the same asset and give somebody else the same asset. And the additional thing that it does on top of that is create behavioral incentives for people to behave in ways that are beneficial to the whole. Right? So in doing those four different things, blockchains are able to create trust between transacting parties, whereas in the previous digital age, we had to rely on this intermediary. Music